April 1st uh, evening here. So I had done the, uh, I had prepared the paper and done the uh, pencil outline in December. I knew that because I have a video I had filmed with a date in December. I don't know, maybe a four or so minute film in which I showed photographs of my murdered great-grandmother Zlata Barshevsky and uh, showed the uh, pencil outline. Well, the time has come. The drawing man cometh. And I uh, finally started uh, inking uh, yesterday afternoon and evening, March 31st. Spent uh, two, two and a half hours on it this evening here. And uh, it's coming along. And uh, I was reflecting on uh, something that happened recently. I had, had finished, uh, I had done and finished uh, last week a, uh, the 20th drawing in the uh, Sightseeing with Dignity Human Rights Art Series. Uh, one depicting a, uh, I think he was 24 year, years old when he was murdered, a young rapper from Greece. I'm not a fan of rap music, but I was struck when I had heard the news. He was uh, knifed to death by a so-called neo-Nazi of the Golden Dawn Party in Greece last September. And uh, I had made a short film of the drawing after I finished it and sent it out to about, I don't know, 50 folks via email, the URL. And got replies from three folks. Uh, I sent it to different friends, colleagues, what have you, and uh, around the U.S., some in England, some in Scotland, and some in Israel. And among the... Uh, three people who replied with any sort of comment about it was uh, someone who's been following my art for about almost 40 years now. There were two people I met in Carbondale, Illinois, where I had transferred as a sophomore in fall 74, who have, I would say have been the most assiduous followers of my art over the last 39, 40 years. One of the, is this now retired art history professor lives in Illinois named George. The other one is a friend now lives in Copenhagen, a student my age. Both a Catholic background, George a practicing Catholic, and George, in my email I had mentioned uh, this is my latest work in the Human Rights Art Series, and, uh, and I, a second paragraph, a uh, long sentence mentioned that I was about to begin the six, what I call, monumental mosaic drawing combo of the End of the Wings of God series, portraying uh, my great grandmother, Zlata Barshevsky, that we see here in this uh, uh, photo enlargement, uh, at least the portion of her, bit of her upper torso and head. So I have a whole, a whole, whole photograph of her seated uh, among several photographs I have of her, and. Uh, this colleague friend of 39, 40 years uh, said something about God uh, should bless me, whatever, give me whatever, fortitude, something to that effect. And he said, uh, just amazed how, how strong my commitment is to my heritage and also to geopolitical concerns in terms of my art. And he was referring to the human rights art series, the Sightseeing with Dignity series for the, that part of his uh, short email and referring, to, I gathered, inferred uh, the reference about my heritage to the uh, forthcoming mosaic, uh, uh, which will be a major undertaking by the time it's done. Um, from the Under the Wings of God Holocaust art series, and I, and since, ever since I got this email, not that many days ago, I kept on thinking, is, is the Holocaust, is this my heritage? Like, really? Is, um, is the, uh, uh, is uh, nearly uh, at least 1,500 or more years of persecution, murder, rape, slaughter, uh, forced conversions by Christians uh, throughout Europe, is that really my heritage? What about the, the positive... Uh, positive um, aspects of uh, the Jewish faith and Judaism and so on, the celebratory things, rituals and joyous things and music and, and social justice, something that I'm particularly uh, partial to. 
uh, tikkun olam it's called in Hebrew, um, and tzedakah, helping others who are less fortunate. And I was thinking, no, the Shoah, that's the Hebrew word for the Holocaust, is not my heritage. It's Christianity's heritage. And then um, I was thinking uh, about uh, some passages I remember from a, a book that I revere among my uh, personal library. And this is the book here. It's called uh, um, Harry James Cargus in Conversation with Elie Wiesel. It was published by uh, Paulus Press, a Catholic press, if I recall, in 1975. And, um, and I can't help but think about the Holocaust, the victims of the Shoah, like my great-grandmother's Lata, who was a devout and religious Jew. She was so religious, I understood from my mother's cousin, late cousin Genya, who died uh, about two years ago, something like that, in uh, near Tel Aviv, that, that Genya was so religious that of her two sons who lived in, in Europe, uh, she wouldn't eat in their homes because they were had given up the, uh, the Orthodox ways and weren't kosher. The third son was my grandfather, who had moved to New York and then uh, lived in New Jersey. And, and, and thinking about this heritage, a couple of things come to mind from the book. Um, Harry James Cargus is no longer alive himself. He was a Catholic teacher. He interviewed Wiesel in 19, around 1974. And the text of the interviews is what make up this book. And one of the things, uh, one of the quotes that keep on coming to mind when I think about it is, is um, this one. Uh, give me one second here. I'm just going to read a little bit from the book. I ask Wiesel this question. This has to be carefully phrased because it could seem an irreverent question. And I don't mean it to seem that way, but is there some sense in which it could be said that those who perished in the Holocaust triumphed and the executioners were defeated? Wiesel's reply, no, I think the word triumph, unfortunately, does not apply to anything relevant to the Holocaust. There was no triumph. I think man was defeated there. Earlier in the same talk, Wiesel had noted the high number of practicing Christians who participated in the massacres of Jewish people, and he had observed that, quote, the sincere Christian knows that what died in Auschwitz was not the Jewish people, but Christianity, end of quote. And Cargus writes, we killed ourselves. Cargus continues, there could be no Hiroshima without Auschwitz, Buchenwald, Dachau, Treblinka, Birkenau, Belsen, Matthaus, and Belzec, Majdanek, Ponar, Sobibor. Uh, interjection from me, he's referring to both uh, death camps and concentration camps in that list. And then he, Cargus, the step from personal to impersonal Holocaust is a sane logical transition, but the latter cannot precede the former. When faced with the question of the non-rebellion of Jews in concentration camps, Wiesel returns another question. Why didn't the killers rebel? And one other quote here. Hang on a moment. Uh, this is uh, a little further on in the uh, book. So while Wiesel can write a book and lecture about the Jews of silence, a silence in a double sense, and I'll talk about, address that in another uh, talk, one magnificent and one shameful, we can only write of the Christians of silence in a single sense. What is a tragedy for Jews in time? Again, this is from Harry James Cargus. Their surrender by their brothers is a tragedy for eternity for Christians. Although that, this is written in 1975, so also nearly 40 years ago, and I'm, I reflect on a visit uh, by a former satellite, Seattleite who moved to Minneapolis, uh, St. Paul uh, last year, uh, Reverend Dr. Donald McKenzie, uh, at whose former church, 
since he re he's retired now from there, I had done a lot of uh, interfaith programming and Holocaust education with with um, uh, fifth, sixth, seventh graders, uh, families in it, adult congregants uh, back in the late 1990s, 2000, 2001. And Don came here uh, when I was working on the uh, uh, fourth mosaic drawing combo of the Under the Wings of God series called Orthodox Jew under uh, barbed wire, Ulkush Pol in 1940. It was about two-thirds of the way done in terms of the mosaic. The drawing was done and it was laid out on my uh, work table here. And uh, once, once this drawing is done, I will be mounting it on a large piece of plywood and building an exterior frame as well as an, an interior frame that the drawing will be inserted, inserted, and then the mosaic will go between the two sections. And one of the, and I filmed, this can be seen on YouTube, uh, and two films, uh, Don talking about his responses to my work from his perspective as a Christian, uh, as a minister, as a teacher, as a human being, and so on. And one of the things that struck me, he wrote, he, he said that he thought that that few Christians, too many Christians, are not are, are aware of the Holocaust in general terms, but have little or scant or no knowledge of what it really what it really was about in terms of human uh, human um, lives lives lost, suffering, and, and all of that. Anyway, I'm going to uh, uh, say adieu for now and this uh, to be continued. And we're at 11 minutes 59 seconds. Time to shush.